<laughs> okay. I tried to save as much as possible from the minus 10 minutes left um, <laughs> by just focusing on the future vision of uh, Airbus Group uh, with, uh, in the context of energy demand and superconductivity. First of all, I would like to uh, give us a hint of what kind of energy we are talking if we, if we go for aviation industry. Um, from the, let's say, more or less 200 million tons of fuel what we are burning uh, in this decade, uh, we grow uh, in the next decades. We are in the lucky situation that all the uh, forecast is going by 5% market growth per annum, which means a double of the market in 15 years. And the various scenarios reflect these optimistic versus pessimistic scenarios and already incorporated savings because we have better technologies and so on. So, but in total, we could, amount, we could guess that we need a, a significant amount more of energy as we need it today. This goes aligned very obviously with the CO2 amount, what we, what we uh, put in, in higher altitudes. And there's a specific promise of the aviation industry that we want to establish a carbon neutral growth, which means we have to save 50% of the fuel uh, by transporting passengers. And you can imagine that is quite a challenge as we are already consuming less than three liters per packs and 100 kilometers with an A380, but with more than 10 times the speed you're going with the car. So, and we want to save another 50% uh, relative to that number. So how is that possible? And uh, we have, uh, let's kind of prediction what, what is in, in the pipeline. One part is purely the evolution of technology, a better operation because we can avoid waiting loops and unnecessary fuel consumption on the airfields and so on. The infrastructure itself uh, to be more efficient, like not using APUs on ground and things like that. Um, then we need Definitely additional technologies, because with all that, we can't manage that. We need breakthroughs. A part of it can be covered by the biofuel, which captures then CO2 and uh, neutralizes at least the emission. And the other part has to come from new technologies. Um, what can that be? Uh, two years ago, my boss, Jean Botti, showed these kind of graphics where we said, OK, superconductivity using superconducting motors and therefore putting electricity in aviation could be one of the solutions. And we have heard uh, from the keynote speech that electricity is the winning horse, so why shouldn't we set bet our money on the winning horse? So we're using electricity. Uh, one of the scenarios was the Voltaire, what we showed in Le Boucher two years ago, where we said, what is the limit of flying full electric. And we put together all what we have in the, time, in the trend lines of optimistic scenarios, like the superconducting motors, superconducting wires, uh, lithium air batteries, uh, nitrogen cooled infrastructure, enormous improvements in aerodynamics and things like that. Therefore, this aircraft has a completely different shape as the ones of today. And then we could fly at least in a kind of regional jet, um, uh, regional aircraft uh, type of thing with full electric. And that was uh, part of the answer you, asked, uh, you, you put on question, can we fly with a 100-seater or something? Yeah, in principle, if we take the trend lines of technology, then yes. And for us, um, this is kind of tomorrow because we need uh, to develop the technologies about five to 10 years, another 10 years to develop and qualify an aircraft. That's the reason why uh, we do not bring every third year a new car on the market. Uh, it takes a bit longer for us. But this is uh, then the next generation if we talk about that. Uh, if we break the technologies a bit down, then we will show as well a bit the progress, what we are doing. On the one side, uh, we have shown in the last exhibition a study where we already incorporated uh, super, uh, superconducting electric machinery in a fan. And we wanted to see if we can incorporate that and what is the impact, is it sufficient room to go, uh, what is the power density, what is the volume, what we need, and it's quite demanding. I can tell you we have a long way to go to come to the numbers, what we promised at that time, that we came to 30 kilograms, kilowatts per kilogram. Uh, with aviation, everything goes with mass because we want to lift off and uh, we have to carry all the things and that means whatever kilograms in addition we take with us, we have to install a lifting device. The lifting device is creating drag. The drag is creating additional power demand. Additional power demand means additional fuel and so on and so on. That means we have multiplications of the kilograms we carry with us. And if we look on the, on the right side, if we have not the opportunity to just cool it with liquid gas, 
uh, we need an active cooling device. These are quite heavy, bulky, uh, and we can't hardly install them. Even if it's only, in that case, uh, 23 kilowatts, uh, you see it's eight tons, it's too much. We can't fly with that. So there are a couple of challenges still ongoing. So I'm glad that uh, Giovanni Grassi is so confident in our concepts that he already renamed our e-thrust concept to e-trust. Thank you for the compliment. Um, I give the compliment back. I fully trust in your wires, but uh, we have to push harder the industry for the electric machinery. And then with the connectors, the bra circuit breakers for the controlling elements, because these become bulky and heavy as well. So we have to do a huge step forward to make it fitting in such an aircraft. So what is then the scenario? If you cannot fly full electric, then we take a hybrid solution where we have a battery in place as well, uh, which means that we take the full power of the electric stored energy plus the turbines and so on for the takeoff and first climb, where we need the biggest power to fly. Um, then during cruise, we switch off the, the uh, turbine example giving and just using this energy storage device uh, from batteries. Uh, for the initial descent, then we start uh, to windmill and using the windmilling force to recharge the batteries partly. And uh, then during the landing phase uh, where we need all the security and all the power available, we switch on the turbines again. And that in total saves mass and that goes in the direction of the 50% saving in, in combination with the aerodynamic glues what in, is already incorporated in the picture, like boundary layer engagement, additional uh, um, propulsive efficiency, and so on. That could go in the direction where we want to go. So what is the necessary energy, what we need to fulfill a mission? And uh, sometimes people may have a wrong understanding. So we're talking about megawatt hours incorporated in the aircraft if you go for longer ranges, and not just a couple of them, but thousands of them. And that means this is nearly impossible, even in the long-term future, just with uh, batteries. Uh, there's no battery technology in the pipeline, which could even come close to that, what we can do now with liquid fuels. So therefore, we have uh, to find a solution, which is uh, uh, a combination of hybrid electric somethings. But for the smaller ranges, like up to regional or short range, uh, it's thinkable because here the energy amount is in the order of magnitude where we can go with uh, full electric. So that correlates as well on the upper left side with the power. Uh, we're talking about hundreds of kilowatts if you go for general aviation or helicopters. It goes already to th thousands of kilowatts if you go regional, but then it's megawatts if you go for short range or long range. So that means a lots of power installed. And with this power installed, uh, and you have to transport the energy during the air uh, over the aircraft. And that brings us back to Giovanni Grasso and the opportunity to transport a lot of amps with moderate voltage because uh, I give you an example what cruise ships are doing if they have a 50 megawatts hybrid system. They go with 11 kV and nevertheless a couple of thousand amps. Um, the question is if that's something what we can do with aircraft and in this moment we always say no, uh, not yet. Um, and you see on the, on the upper side uh, how big uh, the control units become and that is nearly impossible to in integrate. So therefore lots of work to do and, and a long way to go. Uh, but uh, the benefits can be promising. So another aspect is in context of that energy, what we're carrying with us, uh, what is the energy stored? I'll take it as a bulk in number. Um, we assume the ACARA targets of 2050, where we said, okay, we want to have a 50% saving, so we cut it already in half. Then we assume a certain amount out of that energy, what we have to store, comes from electric storage, whatever technology it is in the future. And that brings us back to the, to the power what we need to charge this electric energy storage device uh, relative to the block time, uh, what we assume with the aircraft. For long range, we want to come back to a block time of one hour. Short range is half an hour. Short range regional is even less, like 20 minutes. That means lots of power has to go through the cables to charge uh, the batteries. And uh, yes, of course, we can imagine to do that off the aircraft, to have lots of battery packages outside and charge them over, over the day. Nevertheless, uh, that stacks up because large airports have around 1,000 to 1,500 flight operations per day. That means you have to multiply the numbers on the right side by 1,000 to 1,500, and then you have an imagination what the 
energy flux is, what we have to carry over the airport, or at least to the airport, once we have at least the minimum of energy uh, coming out of electricity. So therefore, uh, superconductivity nevertheless is offering a valuable option for our design space. When I say design space, then it means we change completely the configuration of the aircraft. The pictures, what you have seen, is the first step. There are a couple of more crazy pictures in the internet, if you look out uh, in the internet, and some of them are not so unrealistic, I have to admit. Uh, some technologies we have, as I said, further to develop with the focus of the aviation-specific key performance indicators, specifically high power, high power to mass ratio and efficiency. Efficiency not only in the sense of uh, being economic with the energy what I carry with me, but as well with the question of cooling, because every loss means I have to cool down the losses, because most of the losses are showing up as heat. Uh, I have to get rid of the heat, and even if I fly in 11, 12 kilometers height and the outside temperature is minus 50 degrees, the air density is so low that I have no opportunity to get rid of the heat. So I have no, not a flying radiator, I have an aircraft. Um, that means uh, a lot of these things has to be coupled with modern technologies. So on this, the th uh, third thing, what I want to mention with the industry here available, we are integrator of solutions and make an aircraft out of it. So I'm very much relying on, on the industry coupled to our technologies, like Giovanni Grasso with the cables, but we need as well the other industry for the electric machinery, for the connectors, for the circuits, and so on. And we need robust forecasts. When are you ready with what kind of technologies that we can implement it in our aircrafts? So uh, a kind of promise is good, but more and more we are now relying on you because we want to start. And to give you imagination of what means a start, uh, this is a small aircraft that we have been flying in April. This is a full electric aircraft uh, with 600 kilograms, uh, with two times 30 kilowatts electric engines uh, uh, driving a fan. Um, that has uh, authority about uh, uh, one hour. Uh, it's dedicated uh, for a market of flight schools. Um, it's flying with, in this moment, available lithium polymer cells, uh, which have a kind of a moderate energy density. So we're hoping that the next generation is already giving us even more uh, uh, flight time to go. Nevertheless, we have reasonable flight performance, and the thing is flying. It's not longer a dream, it's doing. It's going on, and we want to bring these kind of aircrafts to market. And uh, the target is to cut the operation cost of these aircraft by a minimum of 50% relative to the existing aircrafts of today. Thank you very much for your attention, and if there are any questions, let me know.